From pain, he has forged a joyous sound. Because blues to me is all like a tonic. It's good for what avails you. He is a man with an enormous heart and an enormous appreciation of the hardships of life and the joys of life. And he's brought that sound from the Mississippi Delta to the world stage. Thank you, play from your soul. What you feel. Tonight, King of the Blues, B.B. King at 80. Pain is often a catalyst for creativity, so it may be a diversion, but it's not a stretch to take this one-time detour from New Orleans to B.B. King. There will be artists, you can count on this, who in days to come transform the suffering of New Orleanians into great popular music. Indeed, there will be times when the songs are remembered and the hurtful inspiration is forgotten. B.B. King, who on Friday turns 80, is the embodiment of the Mississippi Delta Blues. And the blues are a style of music nurtured in pain, but also often brimming with sly good humor. The blues helped a lot of people endure the unendurable, and more than any man living, B.B. King has kept the blues alive. I met up with B.B. King this past weekend as he was about to take the stage before some 7,000 fans at the Wolf Trap National Park for the Performing Arts in Northern Virginia. <laughs> now tell me something, you've done this about 10,000, 20,000 times. Mm -hmm. Still a little bit of a flutter on the, yeah. flutter on the tummy. Mm -hmm. uh, As the band launched into his introduction, I was amazed to hear him say he still worries about winning over a crowd. I'm going to do you a favor here. Just get that lipstick off you. He owned the audience from his first guitar lick on. And staying seated seemed to be his only concession to some 60 years on the road. Thank you. I can imagine hearing somebody say right now, well, child. Oh, B.B. done got so old, he can't stand up and play no more. I say to you, you just about right. On the eve of his milestone birthday, B.B. No, King also it. remains a force in the musical marketplace. Yeah. He's just issued a new CD, B.B. King and Friends, 80, featuring duets with musical acolytes from Eric Clapton to Elton John. And he's co-authored a book, The B.B. King Treasures, featuring mementos from his long life and career. Just before the concert, we sat down at the Barnes at Wolf Trap, a smaller performance space nearby. We began at the beginning, with King's hard scrabble origins as the son of a sharecropper in the Mississippi Delta. It's a land, of course, recently hit by even more hard times. I was down there last week. Uh, it's, a, it's a sad, sad place, but... Uh, you're down from that part of the country. You're from Mississippi. I right? am from Mississippi. But you know what I think, Ted, is um, I believe that when something is destroyed, generally it comes back better than it was before. They either do it or they don't do it. If they do put it back together, it'll be better than it was before. I, I believe that because it's sort of like biblical thinking. As man learned more, he did better and I think we'll do better even tomorrow. King's genial optimism belies the grinding poverty and racism of the world in which he was raised. When you grew up as a young man, you picked cotton. Oh, God, did I ever. I was a, a field hand when I was seven years old. They didn't have any law like you have today, children law. So we're talking about a time in which Jim Crow was the law. Yes. In the South. Right. I didn't know anything else. B.B. Well, King spent most of his young life 
uh, doing grueling farm work from sun up till sundown uh, in one of the you know most impoverished areas of the United States in one of the worst historical periods. Joel Selvin, the San Francisco Chronicle's senior pop music critic, has written extensively about King's life and music. It's hard for us to imagine what Mississippi was like in those days before the Second World War. Uh, not only was it totally segregated, but the blacks in Mississippi lived in a true second-class citizenship. And that apartheid extended to the most basic of human needs, from bathrooms to water fountains. On one of them it would say colored, and the other one would say white. So I was taught you never drink out of the white fountain. I wondered many times, did it taste any different from the other one? And if you didn't want to get in trouble, so you don't bother with that one. You've never been shy about the fact that you've been a ladies' man all your life. Oh, I love ladies. I know God, you do. Yes. I know you do. But I'm uh, still on the same subject here, so hang with me for a moment. Okay. You had to be careful not to look a white woman in the eye. Not look at her anyway. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, we learned that early. Uh, that would get you in trouble. It's a man's joy to watch a lady walk, don't care what color she is. If she's beautiful and she's walking, not to really uh, say they look like stallions, but they walk so proud, so nice. And that just knocks me out, I like it. But because, I'd like to straighten this out though, because I like women, doesn't mean I want to sleep with all of them. I just happen to think that they are God's greatest creation for well, the planet. not all of them, but you had 15 kids by 15 different women, right? What's wrong with that? Not a damn thing that I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> you do enjoy your life, you know. Speaking of women, um, that's, Lu Lu that's Lucille. Lucille. That's yes. Lucille. That's Lucille. That's my girl. I know. Only girl I ever had that never argues with me. And just ahead, a master class with B.B. and Lucille. Because blues to me is sort of like a tonic. It's good for whatever ails you. This is ABC News Nightline. Brought to you by Nissan. 